So I have another DIY project for you. In this video, I'm going to take a piece of this PVC pipe and turn it into a mask for this Fisker's hatchet. If you're interested in seeing how I do it, stay tuned. So I even use PVC piping for a material to make a sheath for a knife or a mask for an axe. Well, for me, cost. I'd love to be able to work with leather, but I have neither the skill nor the tools to do so. Kydex is a great material to work with, but it's expensive and hard to get here. All right. Let's get on with making this project. Okay, for this project I decided to work with my Fisker's X7 hatchet. Nice little hatchet. Uh, this will, uh, what I'm going to show you will apply to any axe of any design. I haven't worked with a double bit axe yet, but I think I can probably work out a design for that as well. So the reason I'm using my Fisker's is, well you can see, this is the mask, or the case at least, that it came with when I bought it at the store. And I think it's primarily designed for hanging up on a rack and more than it is for a pack. It's kind of bulky. It does have a fairly secure snap on it but uh, you know it's it's uh, I think I can improve upon it with the PVC so that's what I'm going to work with now the basic design that I'm going to use this is my good quality Hultafors classic trekking axe it was a gift from my wife when I retired a couple of years ago and one of the things I love about it other than the fact that it's a high quality performance tool is the mask it is simplicity in itself so the mask is just a piece of folded over leather that's been shaped to go around the bit and the, and the head of the axe. And what I really like about the simplicity is that the retention is just a strap that reeves to two holes on either side of the mask. In order to secure it, you simply place the axe in the mask, pull snug on the two straps, and it's retained. So I decided I would try to do that before with another one of my axes, and I did. This is a Grant 24-inch chainsaw axe. And when you buy these at the store, they don't come with a mask at all. They just come with a little rubber tip cover, which in a lot of cases falls off before you even get it home. So I had to come up with some type of a mask. So I decided to try and make a PVC one that would replicate what I have on my halter force, and that's what I came up with. And it works really well. Now, there's no question that it, a Kydex sheath would, be or a sheath would be nicer, or a leather one would be even nicer yet. But in the meantime, until I have either Kydex or leather, this is going to work just well. I'm not even sure I will replace it. It's, it's that functional. All right, let's get on to designing the mask for the Fiskers. Okay, so having made a couple of these masks with this design, I've discovered the easiest way to do it is to start with a simple sheet of paper that we'll make a template with. So to start with, just fold the piece of paper over. Uh, okay. And the fold line is going to represent the top of the mask, the part that goes over the top of the head of the, of the axe. So what I'll do is I'm going to try and do this from your perspective so that you can see it as if you were doing it yourself. I'll be doing it upside down for myself. Okay, I could have done a little bit better job of folding that paper. All right. So the easiest thing to do is to take your hatchet, axe, whatever you're going to use, lay it on the paper, bring it up to the fold line. Now, rather than going all the way out to the edge of the material, come back about an inch from the material. And the reason for that is we're going to be putting um, pop rivets in the material here, and you need a little bit of room for the pop rivets to catch on and create the, the pinch that'll hold it. So an inch may be a little bit much, I might, especially on this little hatchet, I might just close it up to about three quarters of an inch. But otherwise, I'm right along the top line of the fold. I am quickly going to draw around with pen, around the hatchet a little bit. This is just to give me a reference for the next step. Okay, very, very basic lines. You can probably barely see them. And they're there for a reference for what I'm going to do next. All right, grab my marker. All right, next step is, and I'll try to do this upside down, knowing that this is going to be the outside edge of my axe, with that three quarters inch away from the bit, I'm going to come across the bottom. Now, come below the bit by about an inch. Again, you may be more than you need for this in the final project, but it's a lot easier to take it off than it is to put it back on. Come across about an inch and a half. And 
and that's it folks that's all there is to it now this is very crudely done but when I cut this out with the spare scissors it'll look much better than it does right now so what you can see happening here hopefully is the lighter line is the bit of the axe and I've given myself about three quarters of an inch between the bit of the axe and the front of the mask. I've come down below the bit of the axe a bit over an inch. I can always cut it off if I need to. I've curved up around and created what look like earlobes or cheeks on the back. Now they are right on the shaft of the axe and that's where the two holes will be placed for the cord that'll be the, the securing device. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna cut this out and we'll get to work with it using the PVC. Okay, quickly, let's just have a quick talk about what tools you require for this project. First and foremost is some way of heating up the PVC and making it soft and pliable. So for this project, I'm using an inexpensive heat gun I picked up here in Halifax at Canadian Tire. You can't, for this weight, and I'll talk about the PVC in a second, but for this weight PVC, you can probably get away with a hair dryer. Alternatively, you could use a toaster oven. You could hold it over your element oven in your, uh, in your kitchen. Um, there a number of different ways. I would use caution over an open flame or even an element because it will get hot very quickly. It can be, it can burn the skin quite readily and you don't want to release too much of the noxious gases that could be released from the PVC. Other than that tool, number one, gloves. Get a good pair of leather gloves or at least a pair of leather gloves they don't have to be an expensive pair because like i said this pvc does get very hot and you absolutely will burn yourself if you are not wearing some type of leather gloves other pieces of equipment include a drill for drilling pilot holes for the pop rivets so I'll, you'll need those as well the pop rivets i'm using for this project are are 532nd and they're a quarter inch long so just a small pop rivet for this and of course I'll have to match the drill bit to that. For cutting this PVC I'm using a pair of safety shears or paramedic shears. If I'm using anything heavier than this PVC you, I would probably need either a saw, maybe a pair of metal shears although I find them not so effective on the thicker PVC or a Dremel tool is also helpful. All right, let's talk about the PVC itself. So the PVC I'm using for this project is a very lightweight, very thin wall diameter PVC. I bought an eight foot length of this at Home Depot for about $8. And this is PVC piping that's intended for in-home vacuum cleaners. The ones that are built right into the walls of a house where they would have an outlet in each room to attach the hose to. So it works very well. You can also use heavier grade PVC such as sewer pipe. It'll work for this project, but I will tell you that this is much easier and much more manipulatable. You can shape this much easier. It'll cool down faster and you don't have to work as hard to get the shape. And it is plenty strong. It's at least as thick as a piece of leather or close to as thick, thick as a piece of leather would be for this mask. And this is not where it have a high wear and tear on it. So this works just fine for this project. And it's cheap. It really is. $8. I can get, you know, a dozen or so axe or mask mask sort of this at least so this is a 10 inch piece probably a little larger than I need it to be but uh, it'll be it's good to have a little extra to work with rather than run short when you go to do this so uh, two other things that I'm using I have a piece of Corian countertop that was an offcut from a project that someone else had done and they gave it to me and it makes a great base I like it right now because it's kind of cold because where it's been sitting in my basement that means it will cool down the PVC and harden it up that much faster in addition to that, I'm going to use a board for a press just to flatten it out. Do you know, I did make myself a homemade Kydex press made of two pieces of wood hinged together with foam pads in the center. And I tried that out and I found it doesn't work any better than, hold, than, than doing this by hand, at least for this type of project and this material. All right, so the first thing, step is to take my PVC, heat it up and flatten it out on top of the Corian board here. By the way, in working with PVC, I highly, highly recommend that you do all your cutting outdoors. That's why this is already cut. I did this outside of my back deck with my with my uh, angle grinder and a cutoff wheel because this creates a dust, a very, very fine dust. And it's also a good idea to be wearing at least a, a, a dust mask, if not a respirator. In addition, if you're going to be doing in this house and you're going to do a lot of this work in this house, it's good to have a well-ventilated area and also consider wearing a ventilator, or excuse me, a respirator for that as well. Okay, let's uh, get to work. I'm going to use the heat gun to heat this up. I probably won't talk too much because I'm not sure you'll hear me over the heat gun, even though it isn't very loud, but it only takes a few seconds. I'll look at the video when I go to edit it, and if it's any longer than a minute or so, I'll shorten it down a little bit. Gloves. 
Now the trick with working with PVC in a heat gun is to keep the heat gun moving. They will produce a lot of heat like I said and if you stay in one spot for too long it'll start to bubble and ruin the material and overheat it. So just keep it moving over the entire length. I like to start opposite the split where I've cut it with the the, the angle grinder so that I can just start to open the material up and you'll see very quickly how well easily this is to work with. That's all it takes and it doesn't take very long for it to cool down as well uh, maybe 10-15 seconds it'll still be a little bit warm but it'll be stiff and it will hold its shape from there. Alright that should do it for flattening it out and cooling it off and hardening it up. There we go. There's my piece of PVC. All right, let's. right, I'm going to set up for the next step, which is tracing the template onto this PVC. Stand by. Okay, I have my flattened piece of PVC piping. And with a two inch diameter piping, you're going to get something a little bit bigger than six inches once it's flattened. So I've got something just slightly bigger than six inches and about 10 inches in length. So here's the template that we made on the paper a few minutes ago. I'll lay that on, make it easy on myself. I'll take it over to one edge so I have less material to cut off there take my Sharpie marker and just trace around the template. Okay, there we go. There is my completed template all traced on. Hopefully that'll show up on the camera. Now the next step is to cut this out. So like I said, I'm going to be using a pair of super scissors or paramedic scissors and they it's a little tough going but it's not too bad. You can see I can cut through this material quite readily. So I'll take a few minutes and I'll go through this and I'll cut this out and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's cut out. Okay, so here is the completed cut out piece of PVC. It's not perfect around the lines and it doesn't necessarily have to be. As close as you can get to the lines, the better because that means the less sanding and final shaping you'll do and therefore the less dust you're going to create. But it doesn't have to be perfect at this point and that's as close as I could get it with the pair of scissors anyway. So what I'm going to do now is fold this with the heat gun. I'm just trying to make a simple fold so it's even on both sides because our next step is to drill some holes and put in or for the pilot holes for where our pop rivets will go. And we're actually going to put the pop rivets in before we do a fitting to the hatchet. All right, so very quickly, I'm going to heat this up, fold this over, and then I'll bring you back at that point. All right, there is the piece heated up and folded over. Now the next thing to do is mark where we're going to drill our holes for the pop rivets and for the, the retention string. And this is very simple. All I want to do is put a number, you can put as many or as few as you want in here. I find a one inch spacing or on a small mass like this, maybe three quarters of an inch spacing is plenty good. So I'm going to put my first dot and I'm coming in about a quarter inch, maybe a little less from the front of the mask. And I'll place my first dot about three quarters of an inch down from the top. And I'm guesstimating if I want it to be a little bit more precise. I'm sure I could have done that. And I guess one more right on the corner that worked out a little short and one back here. So those are where I'm going to put my, my uh, pop rivets. So I've marked for six pop rivets. I think I may just change that out and make it five pop rivets. So I need two on the end, but I think I only need three, not four along here. The other two marks are I'm going to put them at an angle kind of centered in the, the lower edge of the earlobe, if you will, here, and those are going to be where the strings will go through on both sides. See, now I can drill through both sides at the same time while it's folded over. This is also a good point, once you get that done, to do the sanding and the finishing and work around the edges. For this, I find a Dremel tool the easiest. It is a little messy because it does create dust, but it is the fastest and easiest. And then I might often finish it off with a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a tube of some type to or dowling to do the inside curves or flat along here. And it doesn't take very much. It, it'll it'll uh, flatten out and smooth out very quickly. Okay, so I'm going to drill my holes finish off the edging and then we'll go from there. Okay, I've got all my pilot holes drilled. Uh, in full disclosure, uh, after the end of the last segment, I took the, the hatchet and laid it on top of the mask and realized that I had two things. The beard or the end of the mask at this point was a little longer than it I needed it to be and so were the two ears that come down the side or the, the, uh, the, of the uh, haft of the axe. So. I cut both of those off approximately 
a little over a quarter inch, almost a half inch, just to make it a little shorter in this direction and, and more likely to fit the axe better at the end product. So I have my holes drilled. Next step is to put some pop rivets in. I'll show putting one pop rivet in and then I'll do the rest of them off camera and because I'll show you what the next step is after that. There we go. So not necessary, it's just something I like to do. I like to rotate the the pop rivet tool around a little bit of a circle just so the mushrooming that's occurring on the back side uh, makes them a little bit more of a uh, spherical mushroom if you will. All right, there it is. Keep a hold of one of those nails and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm going to do the rest of these pop rivets off camera and we'll go to the next step. Okay, I've placed my one of my shop vices on the table here just to show you what I'm going to do next. So I have all of my rivets or pop rivets in where I want them. And they're all mushroom wrote on the other side. That little ball that's on the end of the nail that causes the mushroom is still inside of those. And I want to get rid of that because I'm going to peen these over in a second. And that's the reason why I said get a hold of one of these nails and keep a hold of it because it's very easy to drive that back out again. Should have grabbed a pair of scissors for, there we go. Pull in, or not a pair of scissors, a pair of pliers sometimes helpful to pull the nail back out again. So what I'm gonna do after I have all those uh, taken out is I'm going to actually hammer them flat and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm on the, working on the back side where the mushroom is, where, the, where it was mushroomed out by the, by the nail inside of the pop rivet. I'm just gonna use, it doesn't take a lot of force, there's a little plate on the back of my, uh, Vice here, and I'm just going to hammer that flat. And you can see I've hammered it flat on both sides, and I'm going to do that for the rest of the pop rivets, and then we'll come back. Okay, we're all finished with the rivets, they're all pounded flat on the back side. I took the time to smooth all the edges off with some sandpaper, starting with the Dremel tool, and once again, I recommend. This is dusty working with this material, so if at all possible, do it outside. And if you're inside, absolutely wear a dust mask and or a respirator, not and a respirator, but or a respirator, one or the other. One thing I want to point out that is a, a bit of a fail on my point is don't get too close to the edge of your material when you put the pilot holes in and do the pop rivets in. And the reason why is this one right here, when I drilled it, and then I put the pop rivet in and then hammered the back side flat, it started to crack the very edge of the PVC right there. Now it's not going to make for a structural failure or anything like that. It's more of an aesthetic thing. I just don't like seeing that little bit of a crack. But if you're back away a little bit from the edge all the way around and we, when you put the pop rivets in then you're less likely to get that crack. You can always bring it the edge to the pop rivets with some sanding if you if you think it's a little bit too much forward of the pop rivets. Okay next step is for me to form it to the hatchet itself. And I'll do this as best I can, showing you as I go. Gloves, of course. So it'll take a second or two for the material to heat up, but once it does, I'm gonna be placing the hatchet inside of the material and holding it with my hands, because that's all that's necessary, because it will cool off very quickly and take the form. And then I'll look at it and I'll see if there's any fine tuning needed to get it into the final shape I wanna use. All right, we'll heat it up. All right, that's good for my first attempt at forming it. Make sure the ears are lined up as best I can. I've got a little bit more forming to do, but it's uh, pretty close. As you can see, there's still too much of a rounding here. I'm going to be able to flatten that off quite readily. And it's hardening up quite quickly. All right, I'll just heat that up and form that. One of the things I've found by experience is, is take a look when you're doing this form to make sure your ears are even on each side. So all I have to do is heat the back of this up.
a little bit flat. There we go. Looks pretty good. Let's get her off. So the nice thing is at this point is if you look at it and you say, oh, that didn't line up quite the way I wanted to, or that doesn't look quite straight. As I can see right here, the very leading edge is not as straight as I'd like it to be. Just heat it up and do it again. As long as you don't get it so hot that it blisters or starts to burn the material, you can do this repeatedly until you're, you're satisfied with what you have. All right, so I'm going to work on it just a little bit more off camera. One of the things I'm going to do is just ever so slightly, these two ears, I'm going to fold them out at a small degree of an angle, and that's more than anything else just to allow this to get in there a little bit more smoothly. But uh, we're pretty close right now as it is, so I'll just do some finished work off camera, and we'll go to the next step. So here it is, the finished product. So I decided after working on the sheath and molding it that I would just take the time right then to paint it up. And it does take a little while for the paint to harden up. And then I put a cord through it, a nice bright orange cord. Show you how this works. You just pull out on the back of the cord and the sheath will come off of the axe. Back on, pull the cord from either side. It's no snug because it's a little new, but it will snug up on the back of the axe, and that is the retention for this uh, sheath. So it works very well. It's a very simple principle. Now, a couple of things on working with the PVC. Um, I have not had any bad experiences with it so far, and what I mean by that is it has not cracked or broken off from being dropped on the ground. It has not cracked or broken because of it being cold. It has not come apart because of it being warm. However, it hasn't been subject to extreme cold or extreme warmth. I would think that uh, this may, if it gets really warm, start to lose its shape a little bit. It may, if it gets very cold and you hit it on something, it may crack. Hard to tell. It's not leather. It's not Kydex. It is a very inexpensive alternative. And one of the nice things about that is, if you break it, make a new one. This probably cost a whole dollar, maybe less, to make and just a little bit of time. Now you do have to have a few tools for it, but even then, they're, they're just modest tools and tools that a lot, most people have around, the, around their house already. Okay, so there it is, a nice finished little sheath from my Fiskars X7 hatchet, much more compact than the one that came with it. Maybe not as nice as Kydex, certainly not as nice as leather, but very inexpensive and a nice little project to do. All right, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more DIY projects like that, in fact, I have an upcoming video where I'm gonna use the same material and a different type of PVC to make a sheath for a knife. But in order to see that video, you may wanna to subscribe to my channel. But in the meantime, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.